He builds on sand and he builds with sand. But clearly, the shifting sands of time have been more than favorably inclined towards him. Sudarshan Patnaik is a school dropout, but he's revolutionized sand art in India. He's a world champion several times over. He's been featured in the Limca Book of World Records. He runs a school for sand art. And recently, he was conferred the Padma Shri. I am with this young energetic artist at his home in Puri to track the enthusiasm that fuels his creativity. Welcome to the show Sudarshan. Namaskar. Uh, you are a self-taught sand sculptor. Uh, what was it like when you began? Because at that time I don't think there were too many people who were pursuing it as a serious art. So how did you get into the medium and how did you sustain it till you took it to a professional level? Actually, uh, when I was started that time, my age is around 7 to 8 years old. I was. Okay. I just working with my neighbor house and as a servant because uh, that time my family was very difficult to survive because for the financial problem. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother has got uh, 200 rupees pension every month then okay. we have to survive in six person then you are you are three brothers yeah we are three brothers with okay. my mother and uh, grandmother mm -hmm. then I walk with my neighbor house and that time I am so much interested to making some painting and drawing but it will be very difficult to getting the colors and pencil and books etc then our house is very near to the beach uh, sometime when I tired with the walk with the house then I go to the beach to do something castles like the children they yeah. play with the sand and that uh, art form is free of cost for me because I don't have to use anything uh, to uh, any uh, money for that because it's free canvas for us and sometimes I feel a lot of tourists they gather around me and saying wow you're doing so beautiful things then I thought uh, whole day I'm walking in the house nobody is saying beautiful but here I did something which is many people are encouraging me. So when would you go to the beach if you were, uh, you said you were working in your neighbor's house as a domestic help. Yeah. So when would you find the time to go to the beach? Uh, sometime I started in uh, afternoon time around 3 or 4 okay. when a uh, little bit relaxed. Afternoon siesta yeah. time. <laughs> and when I came to a lot of interest on that then I started to come uh, early morning around 4 o'clock to the beach. Okay. Then when uh, everybody is wake up around 6 o'clock in the morning I come back to again to start my work. Having done that you did it, you started very young you said around the age of 7 or 8. But then how did you sort of refine the art? Actually, uh, when I started this sculpture, many people they also say, uh, you're doing so nice art, why are you doing in sand uh, things because it is not uh, right. uh, permanent, permanent. Uh, yeah. art form, why don't you do this forms in uh, other material and all mm. things, mm. it is not staying in long. Mm. But uh, I just thought as an artist, I thought in the life is everything is temporary and this art form have something which is many people are appreciating on the beach. Mm -hmm. So then I try to make uh, develop and then I thought every time how I can stand more bigger, more bigger than because when I started around one feet kind of things, mm -hmm. then I try to make four feet, five feet, how big can be possible and how long. In fact, I was be. just going to come to that, uh, you know, in, in your personal quest to improve your art. What would you say are the main principles that you you taught yourself about uh, sand art and uh, which helped you make it at a much more professional level? Yeah, because... Uh, because you must have done this through trial and error, much of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, like uh, one of the part I try to make develop because how big sculptures we can make mm -hmm. and how long can we stay. Mm. Because when we started, it will be stay around half an hour, one hour, something like that. Then I try to make it like stay whole day. Right. Then I try to. Uh, so what would you do for that? Uh, because we use a lot of water. Because when mm -hmm. we see the sand is need water, 
is a compacting process sometime if we do the in the compacting process it will be staying more than a week on the uh, beach so this compacting process what kind of material you use for it uh, only sand and water because we okay. have to compact with the sand and water then like the children's they making castles on the beach mm -hmm. when they put water and sand together and making compacting mm -hmm. on the bucket mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. take out the bucket then it will be stuck that kind of things we do usually for the starting the sculptures and uh, basically when we start the sand sculpture like big way then we start from the top then we come down to the ground because that is okay. the most important part of the sand sculpture okay. because sand sculpture is need to be start from the top to the bottom like the temple architect uh, is different just opposite for that because temple architect we have to start it from the ground Foundation, to the yes. top mm. but this is we must be start from the top to the ground. So how would you start from the top supposing you're making for instance a temple and you have to make the top of the temple how would you start? Uh, actually we uh, gather the sand is like pyramid kind of things. Okay. Then we go to the top then we slowly. No, but that, that pyramid also you must be building on the base of the beach right? Yeah is uh, uh, that is depend because we have to make the platform like uh, three different steps. So that time we make like uh, one two three steps then we put lot of water and make it the compacting. We were talking about the proportions of the sculpture. So uh, when you started, you must have started small, and then uh, now, of course, we the whole world sees your sculptures. They are really large size. So was it a gradual, uh, pro you know, increase in size that you tried out? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Gradually, I tried. But when I participated in abroad in different international championship. Then I saw there uh, we have to create like 20 feet, 30 feet height of sculptures. Then I see how they are doing these things. Then I saw they are doing the compacting process because we have to make the wooden box. Then we have to put the sand and water to make to the stamp it on that. Then it will be a stronger. Then we have to make another box like uh, kind of pyramid kind of shape we are doing in sand. Okay. So then we open the box because just only sand and water. And uh, that is uh, that kind of sculpture will be stay long time because when the sand will going to be stick or uh, solid, but uh, anyhow any time can be collapsed because it's just in sand <laughs> and water. Yeah. And gradually when I started around two feet, three feet, five feet uh, kind of sculptures, then I thought no, it will be possible to make more bigger, more bigger. Now I have created more than 50 feet heights mm. of sand sculptures. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, one very interesting thing about your work is your choice of topics. Uh, you have a blend of festivals, of uh, religious integration, of current issues, of environment uh, awareness. So uh, first, how do you pick on a topic? And second, having picked on a topic, how do you go about executing it? Actually, uh, when uh, I work a long time in sand sculpture, then I thought I'm doing in the public place where a lot of people, they gather to the beach and they watching my sculptures. Then I thought as an artist, I need to be do something awareness thing so that my art with the message mm. so that goes to the uh, people. Then I uh, do some current topic and issues and when I feel these issues is very important in the globe, I need to be do something on that. Then I started to create uh, that kind of sculptures. Then I saw many people there standing uh, on the beach and looking for that and they are discussing about this issue and all things. Mm -hmm. And this goes to also through media to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I try to uh, make it in something like that then I uh, when I am participating international championship that place also I remember in 2008 when I won the world championship title as the first Indian and there the theme is open then I thought what kind of sculpture I have to do here hmm. then I discussed with many German people and there and I heard uh, there is uh, some climate change is issues is which is going on and which is very important part and many conferences going on on that then I thought I have to create on something uh, on that issue in climate change and uh, still I remember uh, uh, there are uh, one part in the jury the public have to give the vote for the right. best uh, sculpture then I got maximum vote from the public you've so got maximum vote for the pro from the public for many other uh, yeah, competitions yeah I have also. many yeah. 
uh, people chess because many places is same thing uh, the current topic and issues which is public they like because mm. public the, always vote for that there is one sculpture you made of a mermaid asking help from humanity to save uh, the uh, water or something like that yeah uh, yeah so I how did you in conceive that denmark i remember in copenhagen and uh, because Copenhagen is famous for the little moment, so I make the uh, right. bigger moment and message with the save our ocean. Because many uh, places, if we see the oceans, people are uh, spoiling these things and mm. we have more concrete going on that things. Mm. So I have made on that uh, kind of structures, which is, I thought those are people are living near to the coastal it's a places. It's beautiful sculpture. So they will get some message through the art. Uh, there is the use of color also in your sculptures. So, what exactly is this medium? Actually, uh, when after a long time, uh, like I was saying, uh, how I developed something in sand. So, I thought I'm doing always the one uh, sculptures which is only the sand. Then I thought I have to use in canvas some different like color sand. Then we create some vegetable colors sand like we use mm -hmm. for the. Uh, uh, normal uh, color sand we say like rangoli kind of things then we create with so this it's basically rangoli material like yeah, sawdust or something or uh, no just a uh, like uh, we use in uh, rangoli you know this then we create this color sand specifical that will take a little bit time because we picked up the colors and with the sand and making this color sand do you have to make the dry then we have to put it in the sand so sand. for instance if you want the red color yeah how would you do it uh, then we have some red colors in the uh, the rangoli you know that okay. we use with the sand okay okay but we don't use any chemical kind of things colors in the sand okay when was the time you decided that you have to enter a competition and how did it happen actually when uh, i have worked long time little bit in sand sculpture then i try to go to out out of the my state different state all this me. while you were still working at your neighbor's house? Yeah, yeah, that time still hmm? I worked. How yeah. many years did you work there? I worked around 10, 12, 15 years. Okay. Yeah, I worked because like they are my uh, parents, you know, mm. like my family. Mm -hmm. Because I never thought, because still I am, today uh, I thought if something has happened, it's two things. They give me the place where I have to stay mm. and second thing is for the Lord Jagannath because Lord Jagannath bless me and bless that sand which is the Puri beach because I thought whole country we have lot of beaches lot of sand uh, around the country mm. but that the particular sand of Puri is a holy sand for me which is we have created something where the many people and they can see mm. that time when I uh, started a uh, long time after the sculpture I got some invitation from the outside of country but how did they come to know about you because uh, uh, that the big part of the media because media is exposed me uh, what I'm doing here in Puri Beach and so it was the local media which spotted your talent uh, yeah no basically first it started from the national media I still remember some national media they come Puri to visit and they uh -huh. saw my work and they make it one report in the newspaper one so guy is where did they see this work was it part of a festival was it no part no of just I am doing on the beach like regularly I do that time on the beach so and they just came to Puri to for the visit holiday and they mm. saw one children is doing <laughs> like some mm. sand mm. art mm. work then they invited me and they just discuss with me and they highlight these things one guy is mm -hmm. doing this kind of sand sculptures okay and slowly this goes to all of the world my work then i got some invitation from the different country then that mm. time i know ki this art form is going worldwide in different world championship and mm. contest so uh, uh, would you say that you're winning the world championship in berlin yeah. in 2008 uh, that was the time when suddenly everybody got to know about sand sculpture being made by Sudarshan Patnaik and India in turn got to know more about your work. Is is that true or no? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, when I won the international championship in out of country, outside of country, then uh, in India everybody knows mm. somebody is yeah. the sand sculptor who has won the international championship right. uh, out of country. Mm. And that time also is very difficult because when I got the invitation from the outside of country, I 
so to the many people i got this kind of in, uh, contest in the us and these things and but some people they are laughing they thought oh you know how far is us and all things you mm. very difficult to join and mm. but i uh, from the my childhood i always thought uh, hard work always give some uh, something the right things mm -hmm. then i uh, work uh, my work is uh, always i thought i must work do my work mm. then uh, i got the invitation then i try to uh, collect some small amounts of money from the different uh, art lovers and all things then i buy okay. my ticket and go to the embassy to applying my visa then the visa officer uh, he was very happy to see my art and all thing but she says uh, he says sorry we can't give you the visa because you don't have the house and bank balance and this kind okay. of things as for okay. the protocols yeah. mm. but i couldn't get the visa then i was very demoralized so what i can do now because i has so many people they help me little bit money to get this mm. ticket yeah. but uh, they couldn't then uh, that my very hard struggle time then i try again to do something and anyhow uh, i remember first time i was in london for the wtm i remember one of the person manas patnaik who has assisted me to first time to uh, go to london for the demonstration of uh, science culture and then many people also they supported me and slowly that is uh, going on then i try to got some invitation from the different international championship i own many championship in europe then i got again us championship mm -hmm. then finally i participated many time uh, in the championship also mm. and won many prizes and uh, once uh, that time after a long time i got again invitation from the us for the contest and they gave me 10 years visa okay. and and that time they are very happy to know that uh, they asked me i still remember you want to stay in us and i just told them i don't want to stay because i want to do something in my country because this is a new medium for our country mm. because in your country many people are they doing science sculptures mm. and all things mm. and but i want to do something here if you see my passport i have traveled mm. many countries mm. i stay only few days when mm. the competition is going but uh, that's the process of course but uh, i think because everybody starts sand is the medium uh, like everyone thought water is going on and sand will be can collapse and all things but i see now the installation art form in the world like sand snow this kind of medium mm. the general public they like to see this kind of thing mm. so darshan you've been featured in the limca book of world records tell us a little bit about that uh actually i'm uh, associated with limca records because i have done many sand sculptures at puri beach and other places which is created world records like uh, during the christmas we try to make the huge sculptures during mm. the christmas we make sand art festival kind of things because that time lot of tourists they come to puri to enjoy and uh, mm. that time we create the huge uh, sculptures like huge sand sculptures of uh, uh, jesus christ uh, santa claus we make 500 santa claus at puri oh, beach okay. like th this kind of we got a lot of uh, world records at puri beach so what were the world records uh, that's like 500 sand santa claus at puri beach that's okay. the one world record before we make 200 santa claus at puri beach which is uh, another record Okay. and we make like uh, biggest uh, santa claus sleeping at puri mm. beach mm. standing at puri beach like this kind of christmas themes uh, all the sculptures and we make this like sometime we make like 50 feet height then next to we make more bigger like this kind of okay. many records we break ourselves and we create again. so you have five such records yeah more than five uh, world records we have okay uh, So Darshan how does it feel to see your sculptures getting washed away by the water Yeah um, yeah of course many uh, <laughs> people they have asked me the same question because uh, when we do to the near to the beach the sculptures of course the waves they come and take it all the things yeah. but when we go next day to the beach and then the sea give us the new canvas for us to make something new creative but how do you explain to yourself oh i made this with so much of time and effort and energy and it's gone so what uh, do you tell yourself no but because i thought uh, when we do something because we don't know what we are going to survive because uh, life is like this somebody started from the childhood to the big and any time can be anything 
happens. And I just thought I have did something. I have taken my pictures because I thought like this song when one singer is uh, giving his uh, right. song and staying very short time. Then he has to make the record and with the recording. We are just taking the pictures which is for, our, for us is a frame. Okay. Is our work like uh, I have started now this sand art on canvas, mm -hmm. which is I have stayed uh, last time I have made one exhibition in Bhubaneswar, mm -hmm. and I have sent one of my paintings, which is very highly expensive, because that we uh, I have printed my art forms in the canvas, then I try to put it in sand mm -hmm. and color and all things to make some installation art forms. I think uh, some people have also made calendars of your work. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, many mm -hmm. many of company they make yes. uh, calendars and many of uh, our Odisha brand Odisha ambassador yeah, also for yeah, Nalco. Yeah, Nalco is uh, make the brand ambassador now. The Odisha tourism also is promoting for the uh, Navakalabar. Also, I am doing as a brand ambassador for the promoting mm -hmm. these things mm -hmm. because uh, the art form is little dif different because when uh, many contest is going on, world championship and this kind of things, when the public are so much interested. So that is a uh, big thing for us when many people are interested. So do you, do you sketch your sculptures before you go on to the beach? Of course, when we are doing something like the, if we are going for the championship, we have to give one month before the sketches what we are going to be uh, okay. for the sculptures. The, so when we do something on the beach, also we make the sketches. but. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sketch is just the major uh, things what mm. we do but because th this is for the sand medium we have to add a lot of things mm. we have to see where uh, sand can possible to be stay and all things mm. because that's just most important otherwise it will be collapse mm -hmm. uh, you've taught yourself sand sculpture are you teaching your children yeah uh, my my children is like uh, I have a school, many students for me, but mm. uh, I have my own uh, children to two children for me. Yeah. And are both you are just too small, <laughs> but uh, they started little bit. Like, How old are they now? They are now one of my daughters is uh, seven, and my son is one and a half uh, one year, uh, more than years. Oh, he's very young yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay, uh, and your school has been around for some time? Uh, school is going more than 15 years because a uh, long time I have started the school because I have, when I started the science sculpture after a little bit time, then I thought I have to create more artists on field. That field mm. is most important mm. because if I want to this art form, it goes everywhere in our country. I need a lot of artists for that. Then I started a school. When I, whenever I go How to how long ago did you start the school? Uh, I started this school around uh, now is more than twenty years. I have okay. started this school. Oh, okay. And but the, our school is very different because it's only open air school. We don't right. have any shade and all things. And every day the in evening the students they come from the different part. And they just do their self like practice, then I teach them how to do these things. Sudarshan, so you've made a, a sculpture which you called the Black Taj Mahal, and it got a lot of uh, responses. What was that for, and how Actually, did you. Actually, uh, yes, uh, I remember I have created uh, one Taj Mahal in front of the uh, another, the original one. And we created the black sand Taj Mahal, which is uh, Sahajan have dreamed to make another Taj Mahal. Then we get chance to create uh, Taj Mahal. I, I have to say thanks to the UP tourism also. They have invited me to create this black Taj Mahal. I have already created around 50 Taj Mahals around the world because I uh, many places I am trying to create some uh, Taj in sand. So that's it. But any particular reason why it was in black? Yeah, because uh, somebody told me Sahajan have to dream to make another Taj Mahal in black Taj Mahal. Then we found the Yamuna sand was black, so then I thought why not we can try black Taj Mahal because the white one, the original one is so beautiful, so that we can make it in sand. And uh, what was the reason for you to write a book called Sand Art? Because you know the sand sculpture is stay a uh, short time then, but the pictures are stay with us long time. Then we all so the it's pictures. basically a book that uh, 
celebrates your work. Yeah. yeah. It's not about doing stand up. No. Uh, basically, uh, we have. Because I'm preparing another book which is uh, about the training of science sculpture and all things. Okay. So is that an extension of your school? Yeah, of so course. Your because school is somewhere here? Yeah, uh, we are doing the uh, science art classes every day here. Last 15 years I'm doing this school okay. because I have, my concept is to create more artists in our country. So many uh, students, they come from the different part. But uh, for somebody who's self-trained, Yeah. Uh, what are the areas that you feel you can help students? Uh, like uh, mostly the coastal places are good for us to yeah. No, in the sense that for the art, how do you uh, think this uh, class is going to help? Yeah, of course, for the students because those are coming from the uh, different part because they have so much interest. They don't know how to create these sculptures, how much sand they require and how and much they were water. all inspired by yeah. your work? No, that's I can say, but uh, <laughs> I think I will try my best too. And uh, this is a class that is held every day? Yeah, two every hours? day, two hours, three to uh, five. And the students, they come from different part. And also, they, some tourists also, they come and join with us. Achha. And uh, is it, but because you travel a lot, so who takes the classes when you're not there? Uh, we have a lot of uh, my students now, they become a teacher here. So they contact that. Sudarshan Patnaik, you're just 38. You're at the peak of your career. You're at the peak of your creativity. Opportunities knocking at your door. Good luck. We are all expecting a lot more from you. <laughs>